the POF revolution a lot. And now it's time for the Nut and Fancy Tabletop Review. But hey, if you are in a hurry, dude, just click that gear icon here in YouTube right there. Click that and you'll see a speed selection come up for the video. Yeah, select what speed you want to listen to the video at. 1.5, two times, makes no difference to me. You'll rip through the video in two times speed. I do it all the time, by the way, in YouTube. One of my favorite entertainment sources. Uh, not for gun reviews, though, or knife reviews. I'm always out of genre watching. I've told you guys that. But yes, time for the POF revolution. It is groundbreaking in SAWC. It is sub eight pounds. With nothing on it, this sucker weighs, on my scale, I think this is with a magazine in it, like an aluminum mag, not this steel DPMS one, or is that a C Products? Yeah, C Products. 7 pounds, 11 ounces. That's pretty lightweight for an AR-10 style of rifle. You could drop five. That is so rude of you! This is a piston-driven 308 battle rifle in AR pattern. I'll just call it AR-10 because everyone kind of understands that nomenclature. That's what I'm going to go with. I'm a big fan of POF. I have been for some years now. Sitting at the top is a POF Renegade Plus Gen 4. It is a touchstone high-end direct gas impingement AR-15. I use it as a cast member to show other manufacturers how it's supposed to be done. It's okay to charge a lot for your guns, but you better give some value to the customer. That's what I say as a consumer advocate. Same thing goes for this gun as well. It's an interesting tabletop mate really because they look almost identical other than the magazines, right? The magwells of course. The thing is POF was able to design this AR-10 style of rifle right, in the same ready, form factor ready. essentially the same size as an AR-15. So I'm going to start the review off by saying kudos to POF, Patriot Ordnance Factory. Well done. Someone, some manufacturer paying attention to the problems I've been ranting about for years here in TMP on SAWC of these style of guns. They're generally pretty heavy. Nine pounds is commonplace. Eight to nine is uh, normal, like the MMP. 10 weighs in that category. I think it's like 8.4 with a magazine in it. And finally, Pop says, hey, let's go back to the drawing board. Let's do some out-of-box thinking. And they did it, and they came up with a 7-pound, on my scale again, 11-ounce AR-10. Piston-driven. Congratulations to them. Now, I'm going to be totally honest in this review. There are some negative things that I have to convey that happened during testing. It is what it is. I'll pass those on factually, but overall, I'm pretty impressed with the product, the POF Revolution. And I, I think you're going to see this particular gun improve over time. It's going to become better and better, and just like this one. I mean, what is this, Gen 4? It's going to get better and better. So POF never sits still. They're always moving. They're always working. Uh, is it Dasama? Is that his name? The CEO? And his dudes, I mean, I love that about POF. When I started TMP, let's say from years 08 to about 12 maybe, I wasn't really interested in POF guns. I thought they were gaudy. I thought they were big and bulky. I didn't review any. That's how much I disliked them. And then they started making guns like this. And I got them and I was like, oh my gosh, shot them. Saw how awesome they were. I'm talking like the Renegade series. And for that matter, the P308 series, that's an AR-10. They all shot so excellent, and I, you know, I open my mind and I go, wow, this company's come around, and it really is exactly the kind of story I would want most companies to go through. Is that maybe you, you put a product out that ain't so great, doesn't capture the market's attention. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but you never give up. You just keep going, 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 and lo and behold, you come upon some big winners like this. That thought right there is why I can't do a five-minute video. I can't throw that in five minutes. There's no way, dude. <laughs> you still hitting that two times icon right there? By the way, congratulations to our July Patreon winners. I did have their names written down. Uh, oh, here they are. Got them right here. Oh, I'm so glad to have this. So Brian Anderson in Washington State. Robert Shanks in North Richland Hills, Texas. Zach 
Sobel in Florida, Duncan McCaskill in Virginia, Dave Barker in Georgia, and then we got Rick Grad in Oregon. Dudes, congratulations and thank you for being TMP Patreon, the reason I'm still cranking the videos out. And again, I've said this in a lot of videos, but maybe you didn't see those. There is a big disparity of what's happening here on the main channel versus Patreon. I ain't going to battle with this stinky old man. I think you need to learn some manners. <laughs> and that motivates me. So, and by the way, that's all creators. All creators are that way. So if you see a creator flatlining it, and they stop posting content, it's because their monetization got killed off. A good example for that is Gilstrap TV. Very hilarious dude. I think he's in Arizona. He does prank videos. Love watching him. F-A-R-T videos. Oh my gosh, so funny. Funny, funny, funny. He's got the cutest little family too. He hasn't been posting because, you guessed it, he's not monetized anymore. So that's what's going to happen. Patreon's keeping us live. Join if you feel like it. I still love you if you don't. Enough of that. Cool. Philosophy of use on this gun. What would you use this for? Especially since it's a little bit different because it's going to weigh sometimes a pound less than a, I would say, a well put together AR-10. What would you use it for? I would insert the standard stuff I've talked about before. Let's say team rifle, so you're a PD, and maybe you have a response team, a SWAT team. It's a great team rifle. I'm going to talk about accuracy again. We're going to visit that in detail. Anti-pirate rifle. <laughs> I love that philosophy of use. To me, that is really the calling of an AR-10. So you're in the open seas. You're getting uh, approached by pirates. And again, all your, you know, your SOP has been complied with, and you know that you're under attack. So I'm not just saying you just fire willy-nilly an anti-pirate rifle to me is a 308 a 308 maybe bigger but i think 308 fills the bill it can easily engage out to 700 yards assuming your nautical platform is stable enough heavy hitter so it's just something that hits harder as a i always call it a sapper heavy hitter all around so you do the same thing an ar-15 does but you can go through more obstacles you can have an easier ballistic computation in a lot of instances, depending on what load you shoot or what caliber you shoot in your AR-15, by the way. And then competition rifle. I'm holding up, I don't know how many fingers. Competition rifle, yes. There are competitions where they use the 308 rifles integrated. Maybe they're three gun or something else. Without rule of law, would I use an AR-10 style rifle, a POF revolution in that philosophy of use primarily? Well, what I've said, enough of the fingers. What I've said is that if I can take it, I'm taking an AR-10. That's what I've said, and I'll stick with that. If SAWC allows me to take the ammunition, I'll take an AR-10, dude. Whether I'm doing a neighborhood patrol, I'm keeping the peace, I'm repel repelling a zombie horde, <laughs> I will take an AR-10. Now, the POF does save us some ounces. It's not a ton of weight, so this is not a six-pound rifle, dudes. This is a little bit under eight pounds. I mean, granted, it's good. I mean, it's some weight, and I'm big on ounces. But you're still going to have to carry the magazines. You're still going to have to carry 308 ammunition, and that adds up. Can you take it in that philosophy of use? I don't know. I will always reach for an AR-10 whenever I can. There, I said it. I've always said that. Ba basically, over, this is an important philosophy of use discussion here. Again, why we can't do it in five minutes. Over an AK. I love the 76251. Yes, I'm using those two interchangeably. You guys get it. I love it. I mean, for all the things I just said, ballistics better, lots of load choices, actually relatively affordable ammunition, long range performance, uh, obstacle penetration, for that matter, other penetration, if you get my drift, like car doors and stuff like that. Yeah, I'll take an AR-10. I love 76239. 6.8 SPC is okay. Blackout, I will still maintain, is way overrated. And I'll take a 762.51 as philosophy of use. There you go. Now, does this open up more avenues since it is lighter? Mm, do you want me to tell you what the internet wants me to say, or do you want me to tell you the truth? Roger that, the truth. The answer is no. It's too close to eight pounds. If this was like, and I'm not saying uh, we need this, but I'm saying if this was like a six pound AR-10, that didn't recoil, that was controllable, then yeah, I think that would open up new avenues of philosophies of use where you could take this style of gun with you and, and heretofore unbelievable places. <laughs> I 
I'm talking usually a man-powered system. Man-powered system. That's where I've always concentrated, by the way. Man-powered. Now, you can go to POF's website. They do have different variations on the POF Revolution. They have a very interesting informational page. I think their website is very well done. They talk about all the features, which I will go over briefly here as best I can. Maybe I forget some stuff. Go there, though, and it's a really good website. And I kind of like I found one of their sub pages there where they're comparing the components of a POF Revolution against what they would call an intermediate AR-10 and then a legacy, I don't know if they use that term, standard AR-10. And it's interesting. They'll show the size of the charging handles, the BCGs, the buffer tubes, the hand guards, and for sure this thing is the size of an AR-15. And actually the weight of many AR-15. So big kudos again to Pa for doing it. Uh, we'll talk about how they did that here in a minute if you don't already know. If you're watching this video, I figure you kind of already do. Well, let's go over features. Oh, the other models are there too. Different barrel lengths. This is a piston-driven short-stroke piston. I heard one of the engineers say at POF that they have no plans right now to do a DI version of this. I kind of wish they would. And I'll tell you why as the review progresses. Okay, there you go. My little, little insight. Uh, let's go over features, I guess. So this is the same muzzle brake we saw before, a three-port muzzle brake, proprietary, from POF. It is freaking loud, bros. But does it work? It does work. And it has the jam nut on it. Uh, I like the, I really like it. Now, I tested it both with this on and also a can was on it as well, sometimes during the testing phase. And I forget which suppressor we threw on there. I forget. I think it was Wyatt's. By the way, thanks to Gunny's, the great American gun store, for making this review possible. They worked uh, with Pa for me to just get this loaner gun. So I didn't purchase this. It's a loaner gun, thanks to Gunny's. Also, Federal Ammunition gave some boxes, as I always say, not cases, some boxing, Brian Regan's term, of ammunition. So thanks to them. It helps. The rest I buy. And that equates to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars spent, especially when it comes to match ammo. Burn through a fair amount of that with this gun. So that's the muzzle brake. It's awesome. 5 8 threading, 16.5 inch barrel on this one. They have a discussion on the website how they chose not to go with CHF. Notice the barrel is fluted too, underneath the handguard. That's pretty cool. Nitride coated, 4150 steel, 1 in 10 twist. 5R rifling, same as used with the MMP-10, which I think is one of the better AR-10s out there. I may mention the Smith & Wesson MMP-10 before the review ends. I usually do when it comes to sappers. And by the way, that is my nomenclature. I call these guns semi-automatic precision rifles. I actually prefer that over AR-10. Maybe I'll start using it in the review from here on out. We got nice one, Air-5. <laughs> what? Good handguard, four, hand 14 and a half inches in length. We've seen it before. Right there, dude. M-lock capability. I don't mind that at all. Nice attachment method. No rotation. It's solid. Monolithic style, as you can see right here. Proprietary. It is AR-15 size, however. Notice how trim that is. One of my beasts with a POF P308, which I think is discontinued now, was that big fat handguard. And I did complain about it, and I think it was deserved. It was just too big, and a lot of them are. Like the SIG 716 Gen 2. Still, we have kind of a bigger handguard on there. Proprietary, most of them are on these piston guns. But I really love this handguard. Even if I could swap it out, I wouldn't. I mean, it's trim enough. Built-in pick rails at top and bottom for accessory attachment, bipod on the bottom, maybe a VG if you want. And again, it's M-Lock all the way through. Then we got QD cups all through the platform. There's one right there, one on the other side, and one in the rear. That is so rude of you. By the receiver plate here. Love this rail, I really do. I, and a lot of this will echo what I said with the POF Renegade Plus. I mean, it's really a similar rifle, kind of like this. The heat sink, three inches long, dissipating heat 17 times faster than a standard barrel nut. Again, cutting edge from POF. I love that. Love the barrel nut. Hey, can you tell me the difference in shooting and dispersion of the rounds nut and fancy? 
Mm, honestly, I would have to say no to that question. I can't. But knowing what I do know about metallurgy, I'm not an expert. I'm all about sucking the heat out of the platform as quickly as possible, especially if I'm in an emergency situation. That's what I think it would be. Where I'm going through magazine after magazine, I'm really heating up the gun. That's where I think that, that heat sink will come into play. And having worked with heat sinks and other applications like amplifiers and stuff like that, I am familiar with their effectiveness and, and why they are included. Billet receiver, it's a Gen 4 receiver in this version. Now, you do have an AR-15 style of trigger in there with anti-walk pins. My understanding, it is a little bit further aft than an AR-15 platform due to the magazine size and the magazine well, which obviously had to be enlarged. But you can swap in something else. The, the trigger, I think, is decent. I'm not totally in love with it. Notice it's a curved blade versus a flat blade on the Renegade, this one right here. But you can swap it out if you don't like it. I liked it. I wasn't totally in love with it. Pulled for me about five pounds. A decent trigger. Built-in trigger guard with a billet receiver. No problems with that. That's cool. And then we have the same ambidextrous controls we did on the POF Renegade series. So if you're a lefty, granted your ejection is coming out the right. That's not swappable. Maybe that's not awesome. But the rest of the controls, you know, bolt release, uh, magazine release, safety, full ambi. Yeah, I, I like that. Standard charging handle, and then we have that, I'm not charging handle, I should say forward assist is what I meant to say. And then we have a Tomahawk charging handle. It's an awesome charging handle. Not that it's the only one, there's so many great ones out there, but I've done recent reviews where I criticize the fact that we're having to pay this exorbitant amount and we're not getting an upgraded charging handle. And here you see the glass, how it easily clears the glass on my Aero Precision 30 millimeter 5.6 ounce mount. Love this mount. I'm still using them. Just make sure you tighten them down. You got to tighten them down pretty good. I've, I've not done that and the scope has walked on me because I was sloppy when I put it on. Here's your information right there. I'll put a link below. I buy them in Amazon. These are two different scopes. This is a Leopold VXR 4 to 12. Great scope. Illuminated. This one's not illuminated. Pro Staff 7. High value review scope. Although I tell you what, if I own this gun, I'd have no problem running a Pro Staff 7. This exact scope, this exact mount on top of it, double thumbs up. I just go, yeah, perfect. It's not illuminated. I would like illumination for sure, but it's okay. Really great brightness uh, and easy MOA adjustments. I always shoot an MOA, not mills. That's just what I've always said. I stick to that. Uh, it just works for me. I'll have like a spotter with me where we need to talk to each other in mills. Now, not so much. So that's the receiver, the controls. Then we've got this hand grip on here, which I would not change out. What's it say? EPG 16V2. I think it's an MFT on this version. Yep. MFT Battle Link stock. I just love this stock. I have it on a lot of my guns. So lightweight. There is some wiggle at the rearmost extension. Wow. That's pretty much standard in all the guns that I see. This is a mil spec tube, by the way. Same size as an AR-15. Speaking of which, a lot of the components are fully interchangeable. How's that? It, though it's an AR-10 platform. For instance, you can swap out in this gun, the charging handle, the bolt carrier will fit. Obviously, it won't work. The cam pin, the buffer, the heat sink is the same. The hand guard is the same. That's pretty cool. So again, it is an AR-15 size of rifle. And then I don't see any staking there. I don't really care. I just keep my castle nut super tight. We don't have a sling plate there, but we do have that flush mounted QD cup. The rest is AR-15 standards. A look in the magazine well. Feels lightweight too. The overall feel of this is very AR-15. Totally AR-15. Now I'm gonna show you inside. It is rather filthy. Here's the bolt. MP3 coated mechanical integral key for the piston you can see it right here and then that go corresponds to the tube has some carrier cradle extensions right here to prevent carrier tilt i didn't notice any carrier tilt at all i love mp3 by the way i love it it's just a good coating notice it's even though it's a piston gun it's pretty dirty right i think a lot of that is when we shot it with the can on it and this is the meat and potatoes right here dudes 
So the bolt right here, this dimension is the same as an AR-15 BCG, which I thought I brought up with me. Let me see if I have it. I do. Awesome. So this is one of my spare BCGs. It's actually a DD, Daniel Defense. You should keep some spare ready to go BCGs all the time. So we'll just do a little informal comparison. This one's brand new, hasn't been used, but you can see the difference. Bigger extractor. The overall diameter is the same, it's just milled out more. And I think there are some concerns, you know, hey, how durable is this thing gonna be? I'm talking the Revolution Bolt Carrier Group and Bolt. Uh, there were some changes, small dimensional changes in the lugs for sure. And the answer to how durable it's going to be, uh, time will tell. That's what I say. It's going to take thousands and thousands of rounds to know. Time will tell. But look at the overall length. AR-15 style, bro. Yep. Pretty excellent, actually. Lightweight. And if you were to, of course, measure and weigh this bolt carrier group against a legacy AR-10, you'd see massive differences. Again, POF, and I'll try to roll in some of their images that shows you shows you this and talks about it there. So that's just a quick look at the BCG. Here's a look at the trigger and inside. Not much to see there. Sorry it's so dirty. Usually I clean it up before I bring it to the table. Didn't want to this time. There you go. Man, I love that charging handle. One of my all-time favorites. Uh, better than a BCM, nothing fancy. Mm, I love the gunfighters too. There's a lot of different mods, different charging handles out there. I just like to be able to clear the freaking scope. If I can clear the scope, I'm a happy camper, dudes. This also has the tightening screws right here for receiver fit. Receiver tension screws is what they're actually called. Hope that's focusing for you guys. You can see it right here. They're flush mounted mini Allen heads. And that is features. Pretty straightforward. Now, POF makes a note, and I think they're correct, is now it's going to be a Me Too move that the other manufacturer is going to say, oh, wow, well, we're going to do that too. People have asked, hey, what metal are you using on your bolt in order to machine it down to those tolerances? What, what metal are you using? And smartly, POF says, uh, we ain't telling you. Figure it out yourself because it's a competitive advantage and we, we made it and we spent a lot of money making it. And I'm with Poff on that one. I was like, don't say a word about it. Let them figure it out themselves, such as competition. So I, again, it is an engineering accomplishment for what I can see. There are some downsides. We're gonna talk about those uh, pretty soon, pretty soon. Let's see if I forgot anything on features. I don't think I did. If I did, I'll come back. Oh, there is one thing. Has the MP3 roller head that rolls in the upper channel receiver, just like the Renegade did. That's important. And I, you saw the cam pin there. So it minimizes wear and also has four channels in the channel. Cha I'm sorry, in the receiver, small channels in the, the chamber wall, supposedly to help the E2 dual extraction. Now, I don't know if that's totally necessary. I said that in the Renegade review because I've shot a lot of ARs that do not have that, a lot of AR-10s that don't have that, and they function perfectly. Some of them. <laughs> Some of them do. Yeah, but there's a couple other features. So watch for the review, by the way. You should watch my watch reviews. Is a deep blue Master 1000 in Pepsi coloration running a two-piece NATO strap. Actually, I guess it's a Zulu strap. Great watch. Sapphire Crystal Automatic Miyota Movement. Then I got my eye watch on this side. Embrace it. Embrace the two watch concept. Actually, this is a wrist computer. It's not a watch. No soul, bro. How did it shoot? Okay, okay. Take a deep breath, nothing fancy. How did it shoot? Okay, remember that part where I said I'm going to be totally honest with you guys? Here it comes. There were problems with the POF revolution this generation. In fact, when we took it out, I think it was Sean and I, my first team member shooting it, we had a lot of problems with it. It was just not cycling. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, here it comes, is it does have a five position regulator on the gas piston. I kind of wish that was more clearly marked. Five position, I guess, is great. I mean, obviously you can adjust it for adverse conditions and suppressor use. And we did it according to instructions and we started having issues. And I forget exactly, was it failure to extract? Uh, 
it, it just, to be honest with you, it was a mess. It was a lot. It played around a lot with the gas regulator and it did improve. And we didn't shoot that much steel with it. I mean, I, I just shoot steel briefly and the rest was what I think is quality brass ammunition. And it had some problems. Now the good news is, as the test progressed, and as we used different magazines, and so I used DPMS Teal, I used the Magpuls, I used the Brownells, and I think that's the sum total of what I used out there. I don't think it was magazine related, but the gun started shooting better. Make it disappear. <laughs> now, to give it a fair shake, I did take it out on multiple outings, and so it saw probably Man, we shot this thing a lot. I would say probably 800 rounds shot through this thing. It, it got better. It got better. There were, I think, a couple light primer strikes on 1980s era machine gun ammo. I don't really blame the gun for that because that's an old ammunition. Super hard primers. But yeah, that did happen. And then here and there, we would just have a stoppage. Just, just here and there, we'd have a stoppage. So that is what it was have i seen this many stoppages in an ar-10 style rifle before mm, yeah but it was a lot i'm just going to be honest with you it was a lot now you could say well you had your regulator all screwed up mm, I, I think at first we did but i think we put it in the position that it should have been and i think i have video of this for the phase of shooting in other words if it didn't have a suppressor we just followed the instructions put it in the position it should be in and we still had some stoppages it was disconcerting because i never saw that with this gun the renegade albeit it's a different animal this is di you remember that part where i said i hope they make the revolution in a di that's one data point for you i i don't mind an adjustable uh, gas block but i want more simplicity maybe give me three positions and by the way again make them clearly marked clearly marked. Here we had to refer to the instructions because you can actually do a 180 degree turn on this gas adjustment and you kind of got to know the rifle. Now if it's your rifle and you've done it before, of course you'll learn it. But as a reviewer and I go from platform to platform, I got to look it up. And that's what we did. We looked it up, adjusted it. Again, it got better. The dynamics of shooting the gun, uh, it, it has recoil. Actually, I feel like it has a fair amount of recoil. Granted, I think the muzzle brake works great, but it is a lightweight AR-10. Uh, it, it jumps around, I thought. I did read some other reviews online, and guys were saying, yeah, it, you know, it shoots like an AR-15. I would disagree with that. It doesn't. Maybe it shoots like an overgassed AR-15 shooting 77s, but I think it has some recoil. I think it became more enjoyable when we put the can on it. Trigger was okay. Again, I said I did not absolutely love the trigger, but it pulled fine, and that takes us takes us to accuracy which honestly was uh, not super great at times I was really shocked really so Federal 180 soft points PMC's those are garbage they don't shoot worth crap anyhow Federal 150 FMJ's that's an okay group okay group PMC's awful awful this is with a dead air can on it by the way as you can see so I fitted my dead air on there this is also in May now this is what we're talking about this, this is what I would expect, especially with the billing of the POF Revolution, because they are kind of billing it as a sub-MOA shooter, as an SPR. So this is what I would expect from the gun. And I did get that. So that's the takeaway. I have, I was able to shoot good groups. And by the way, this is operational in the desert. But if I have a bad trigger pull, if there's some human factors involved, I'll tell you guys and you'll see it somewhere on the tar target scribbled. I will own up to it. Atomic match. This, this load right here, it's not very fast, but dang, is it consistent. This should shoot half MOA out of a good gun. You can see the group. GMM right here, gold medal match with a flyer right here, Atomics. That's not a bad group, by the way. It's just over MOA. That's pretty good. And there's a group here. I forget the load. Federal 150 grain soft point. That's a really accurate load. Shooting good. That's not horrible. Gold medal match, so WTH, man. What up? Good God. Federal so I, I said cold bore. Oh, that's what CB is. Cold bore? Is that why I have a flyer? In other words, flyer, 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 cold bore, perhaps. Now, along with that, I did test, and I think that's the sum total of the paper I've got for you. I did test an SR762. 
So just by way of reference, also piston driven gun, look at that horrendous accuracy. Embarrassing for the gun, good pull. So I would say the POF Revolution is dominating that. But compared against some other AR-10s like the M&P-10, uh, some other ones, the POF 308, if I remember, didn't shoot super accurate. It, very reliable though, it didn't have any reliability problems at all, the P-308. I would say some of the AR-10s are more accurate and some are less accurate than the POF Revolution. But this is a shelf price of about $2,600. I want it to be consistent sub MOA with a bunch of different ammunition and I'm not seeing that out of this gun. I had to work very hard to get it under MOA with the loads that it liked. That's the takeaway. Back to my recommendation they do a DI gun. Would it be more accurate from going from a piston to a DI? I'm not an engineer but I have shot a lot of guns. I, I would tend to say yes. I would tend to say yes. I would like to see a, an, a DI version of this gun and really pay attention to the barrel. I know that the barrel sounds like it's super high quality, right? 5R rifling, it's fluted, 4150, all that's great. Nitrided, not, not chrome plated, but I'm just not getting magical accuracy out of this gun. And the 308, I've reviewed a lot. Get into my playlist of the 308 battle rifles. There are some out there that shot extraordinarily well. One that comes to mind is a SIG 716 series. The MR762 series by H&K. Those are accurate to sappers. Holy cow are those accurate. So compared to those guns, from what I saw with this generation subject to change, um, they were a lot more accurate. I think POF will continue to improve this platform though. I think it will get better and better. Uh, I don't think they need to do much with the component upgrades. I'm very happy with the component layout of this gun. Two thumbs up for me. I think it's great. But I, wa I want to see more reliability. I want to see a more simple gas system that is idiot proof because sometimes I'm an idiot. I think a lot of users are. And I want to see top notch accuracy for $2,600. I think that's reasonable to expect from Gen 1 of the POF Revolution. What would I buy it or would I buy it? Uh, competitive options against this gun. Would you buy it? Nothing fancy. Um, to this generation, to be totally honest, I probably wouldn't. For the reasons I just said. But as it's improved, Gen 2, Gen 3, yes, I would. If a DI version comes out, yes. Uh, and I'm not saying the piston driven is, is broken. That's not what the takeaway at, is at all. I'm not saying that. But if like two, three years in the future, this gun comes out and it can be verified that, hey, this thing is really, really accurate. It's really, really reliable. I would buy it. I would buy it. And again, I said durability and, and maintenance on that gun, the innovative bolt carrier design, the thin, thin walled bolt with very special metallurgy. Time will tell. You know, it's going to take, uh, take a lot of time. But some people have some trepidation of the thin wall bolt face. But we're told it's a horrendously expensive alloy. 50 times the surface hardness of mil spec carpenter steel is what Poff says. Time will tell though. Other guns that I've reviewed that are highly recommended Bushmaster ORC. That's heavier, it's 8 pounds, 2 ounces, which for an intermediate AR 10 is actually okay. Remember, this is 7 pounds 11, so that's only 7 ounces more on my scale. You know, that's just my scale. Smith & Wesson M&P 10. I was wrong. I said 8 pounds 4 ounces. It's 8 pounds 3. So that's what? Uh, 8 ounces more than this one? Uh, yeah, it's more. Uh, but man, do I love the M&P 10. Also, it has an 18-inch barrel. 18-inch barrel. Also, 5R rifling. 4150 steel. Uh, I just love the M&P 10. It's outstanding. Rock River Lar 8. 9 pounds 4 ounces. That's more along the legacy Wait, DPMS LR, and I'm not going to roll imagery and all this. I'll just rip through them. DPMS LR 308 Gen 2 uh, underperformed here, but I think I had a BCG problem in that video. Maybe I revisit it. Some guys really swear by it. SR 762 by Ruger, nine pounds two ounces. Uh, I'm not too too enamored with that gun, and I don't recommend it. 7120 steel, chrome line barrel, good trigger, 4.5 pound trigger. FN 17S. You guys know I love that gun. Not, su not super duper light. Reaper, nah. 716 series I've talked about a lot. Love that. FNAR, 
heavy, but man, that thing's accurate. M1A, oh, not an AR-10, just more of a second cool than DDV-51. That had some reliability problems here with steel for sure. 3,000 retail, 8.5 pounds. Uh, Caltech RDB, and I could go on. I'll just end it there. Uh, any one of those in my playlist, I'll talk about it and give you a nothing fancy likability scale. Uh, I really, again, sincerely thank Pa for making this gun. It is, I think, I think it has the potential to be completely and totally awesome. I don't know if this generation is quite there yet. Maybe a little bit of fine tuning, but that's just my data and my shooting, albeit multiple outings and a lot of rounds with a lot of different people shooting the gun. A lot of different people. So reliability, again, to stress, got better as the test progressed. Although I don't think an AR-10 style rifle should have to be broken in. It should be great out of the box. I've always said that. Accuracy, eh. Couple good groups in there. I showed you that, but it was not consistently uh, tight for me. But I did read American Rifleman's review on it, and they were saying they got out of their POF Revolution 0.8 inches. They're average at 100 yards. So that's pretty good. That's definitely, obviously, sub MOA. But it's lightweight. We have shaved about a half pound off an intermediate style AR-10 rifle. It looks great. It has a great component selection. I don't think it's exorbitantly priced for what they've done. For the R&D they spent in this rifle, for the alloys that they're talking about, I don't think it's outlandishly priced. Uh, I would just watch this gun. I think it will be successful in the market, and I think subsequent generations will be complete home runs. I might, I might do a follow-up review. Nothing fancy. Thanks a lot. Bye.